Hi, I'm V and this is the Ratcheting Raven. Today I'm going to be putting a new radiator in the 67 Mustang. Now that the radiator has been drained, I'm gonna take it out. First I'm gonna undo this hose right here. I got the hose clamp loosened enough that I can move it and now I can kind of slide it out of the way. Okay, so now that I've got this hose clamp pushed back out of my way, I've got to wiggle this hose off. It's not going to be very easy because it is on there really snug. I might get some pliers and loosen it up. I don't want to rip the hose either, that's for sure. Haha, ah, look at that. There we go. Ah, okay, that's off. I'm gonna go ahead and take this other side off too, just so it's completely out of my way in order to get the new radiator in because the new radiator is significantly larger. It never hurts to have more room. There we go. Block this off so nothing gets down in there. Next, I will have to, it's hard to see, but to get that hose right there. Hose clamps like right in there. That thing was stuck on there, goodness gracious. Hose clamp off. I'm gonna do the same thing I done up top. I'm gonna take a wrench and loosen that hose because it is cooked in place. Pliers, wrench, whatever. You get what I mean. That thing is stuck in place, holy moly. Okay, the last thing that has to be done before I unbolt the radiator is there are, there's this line right there and there's another one right there. Those have to be disconnected with a 9 16th wrench. They are, they are rusted into place. I've hit them twice with some PB blaster. I honestly, I don't know how well, how much that's going to help me, but we're going to see. It's actually a 5 8 wrench, not a 9 16 And holy moly, that's rusted into place. I'm actually gonna get down below and see if I can get to them any easier. Okay, so this one over here is disconnected. That was actually much easier. Now let me swing around and get to the other one. Both 
hands are disconnected. Now that I've acquired my first injury from the job, we're almost done taking the radiator. So to get the radiator out, there are four bore bolts. There's one here, one at the exact same spot spot on this side over here. There's one down on this side and there's one the exact same spot on the other side. Those come out, radiator comes out. It's a half inch. There's one. I'll have to use this extension for the other one. Whoops, there's that one. I'm not really sure how I'm going to get this one. I'm trying to do this one down here. There's that one. And let me see. It's kind of a pickle. Probably just use a half inch wrench. I see what the problem is. This also holds the horn on. So I have to get another wrench to hold this bolt for the horn or the other side of it, whatever. And there's a, another nut behind that one because why wouldn't there be? tape. What else am I going to find in here? That went to something at one point. There. The radiator is out. I've already taken the power steering pump off. That's getting replaced. New radiator. But that wasn't too bad. Did hurt my finger. Ouchie. Here is the new radiator that I am putting in the 67. It's considerably larger both width and depth compared to the I'm guessing original one. Since the clutch fan has to come off in order for me to get this big radiator in here, um, it has four bolts. One, two, one, two, and then four. It is a 716th. I will get those off real quick. Ideally, it's always in good practice to use the closed end of the wrench, but obviously, you know, that's not gonna work. There. Clutch fan's off. Now that that's off, let's get the radiator in. Oh. 
Okay, so I'm back with the radiator install or upgrade on the 67. The new one took a little bit of fitting. This vehicle was in a wreck many, many years ago, and a lot of this had been cut out, which made fitting this one in a bit of a challenge because there was really nowhere for it to like bolt up to like the old one was. So I was able to use this point from the old one, and that is the only bolt over here. This side had to be drilled into right here, and right and right there it's secured in place and that's really all that matters at this point there was not a lot to work with here is where the radiator comes through on the back side and then a self tapping down here it's on there tight it's not going anywhere so the old radiator did not have an overflow tank um, new overflow tank is in however it had to be mounted on this side and it's mounted here and that's it <laughs> it's mounted right here it cannot be mounted over here due to the battery tray there's literally just there's no room um, for the battery and the overflow tank so that's where I'm at as of right now I'm going to start by reconnecting the lower radiator hose down there. I'll connect the upper. I'll connect the overflow to the tank. I'll fill it up and we'll go from there. Oh, I also forgot to mention, there's a little cooler in the bottom of this radiator and I have to hook these lines up too. Okay, so first I'm going to be reconnecting this lower radiator hose right here. I've already slid a hose clamp over it. that's back on I'll tighten up this hose clamp that's on there super tight good and snug next I will be reconnecting these lines I've got these fittings that came out of the old radiator that's what I'll be using I have cleaned them up to the best of my ability the rest can probably be easier done from up here all right, and these are half inch, so I'll connect to this one first. Hopefully not. So we're going to try it this other way. That worked. All right, that one is connected tightly. The only problem I foresee is this pulley rubbing against the line right here. But this is much thicker than the other one, so there's not a lot. This radiator is much thicker than the old one. So I don't really know how I'm going to, I might could, gently bend the line I'm not really sure we'll cross that bridge in a few I'm gonna do the same thing over here I'm gonna connect it here first I'm trying to be easy not to bend any of the fins some of them got bent in shipping some of them have gotten bent from sitting around 
couple bent right there. All right, that's good. This connection is a half inch. This connection is a five eight. I think I mentioned that before, but just to double check. I do foresee this potentially being a problem too. The way these lines sit. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna remedy that either. I'm not the biggest fan of hard lines. They're always a hard time. Okay, so what I'm trying to do, I disconnected this line to try to connect this line. We're gonna see if this works, I don't know. I really don't know. It has to be at just the exact right angle. And I'm just not sure how this is gonna work. up the way that I need it to. So. I'm going to try something else. I'm going to screw this end out of there. I'm going to try and get it in here. Which it was no small feat the first time. All right, that's in. Now maybe, just maybe, I can angle this so that I can get this one in here. I don't know. I've never had such a pain of hooking up a new radiator in my entire existence. Oh my goodness, I think I got it. Oh my goodness, I think I got it. Okay, that one is connected. That was no small feet whatsoever at all. Now, I'm sure this line will give me a problem too because why would, why would anything be easy for me? Okay, so still trying to get this lined up just right I have an idea we're gonna do some pea blaster right here so this turns a little easier and slides a little easier I guess I should wear some gloves whatever nut on the hard on the line itself not the connector is a little bit seized up and it's making it difficult to get it into position. So hopefully the, between the PB Blaster and the WD-40, that will help, I don't know. Oh my goodness, it worked. Look at that, that worked, cool. business is getting this second line not to rub this main drive pulley. We'll see how that goes. I don't know. All right, I think that'll, that should work. They're out of the way. Go make sure this bleeder screw over here is uh, not set to bleed. All right, so as it sits, lower radiator hose is connected. Two lines are connected and the whole bottom end is checked out. So next, I'm going to reinstall the clutch fan and it is a very tight, tight fit. 
with this clutch fan in uh, in here. I mean, just colossally tight. You're gonna have to be very careful not to stab the radiator. But it sets just like that. So that one screw that I just put in is holding the fan in place. I will go ahead and get at least one more screw in. That way it's a little extra secure in place. All right, let me see if I can get these other two in place. I might have to tighten these down up here first. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna get those snug down a little bit more first. I don't remember what size these were, maybe uh, 7 sixteenths, maybe. Yeah, okay. All right, that one's snug down. Fan's not going anywhere. I'll tighten this one down. All right, that one's not going anywhere. Let me get another one in down at the bottom. All right, that one's in place. Now this last one, I'll get it in place, which it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for me. Uh, it's hard to see. All right, all four are in place. Let me tighten down the last two that I just put in. I'm gonna tighten them all down. All right, fan is on. That is how much clearance there is. Enough to stick my fingers through, but it will not wobble, so it will not hit the radiator. It's just a very tight fit. And it did come with an electric fan, but we're gonna see how the clutch fan plays out. And if it doesn't work, then we'll install the electric fan that came with it. Since everything at the bottom is reconnected, clutch fan's back on, I'm going to connect the upper radiator hose, which is right here. I don't think that crack goes all the way through, but it probably will need a new radiator hose for up here, but we're gonna see how that works for now. Next, I'm going to connect the overflow tank up here. I'll put a little bitty clamp on it. All right, that ends on there tight. Here's the overflow. Well, the bottom of the overflow anyways. I'm just gonna be tightening up this hose clamp on here. And if I can push it up a little more, I will. It's about as far as it'll go though. So I'll just put this little clip right here. I'm actually going to try um, a little socket. This would be a six. 
think it's going to work just a little bit easier for me in this tight area. Okay, so the way I'm going to be filling it up is the way that I've filled up my Mazda and other cars to start off. I'll be using water wetter and distilled water. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because this car has apparently never been flushed. That should have been done before I put the new radiator in, but I digress. It's going, I'm going to put water wetter, distilled water for a little bit, flush, repeat that a couple times to clean out the system, and then the regular coolant will go in. But this is a great solution for uh, flushing water wetter and distilled water. So that's what we're doing. So I have... I have pre-measured out in a measuring cup the amount it takes for one gallon. So when you see me with a red measuring cup dumping in, that is the exact measurement to pair with this one gallon of distilled water, which is 16-ish capfuls. So I'm going to pour some water in. water wetter. I'm going to dump it in. This is a great time to ensure that the bleeder valve is closed. This one is indeed closed. All right, so that's one gallon. I'm not entirely sure how much it takes to fill this radiator up. It's definitely going to be more than one gallon. So I'm going to measure out another serving of water water and pair it with another gallon of distilled water. All right, so here we go with another gallon of distilled water. Here goes the water wetter. Still like some to go. Okay, so we are getting close to the top of the radiator, it being completely full. I would say maybe another half gallon, if that. So I will mix up, or I will pour, um, I will pour out another half gallon's worth of water wetter and pair it with a half gallon of water and see where we get from there. This radiator takes exactly two and a half gallons for the initial fill. See, it's full. I'm gonna leave this like this for right now. I will add a little bit more water wetter and water to the funnel up here in a moment when I go and crank the car. That way it can <clears throat> circulate through the system, it'll pull in what it needs, and any bubbles will obviously come out. I'll also put a little in the overflow. 